I was wondering if um, basically just looking at Dustin Poirier's resume at this moment in time, could you make a case if he was to beat um, Charles Oliveira? Obviously, after he beats Conor McGregor, let's just say he has a fight against Charles Oliveira for the title and he actually manages to beat him. So that means he's beaten McGregor twice. On top of that, he's uh, beaten Justin Gaethje. He's beaten Anthony Pettis. He's beaten Dan Hooker. He's beaten Max Holloway twice. And he's beaten Eddie Alvarez. And on top of that, he also beat um, Charles Oliveira, who's just coming off the biggest win of his career against uh, Michael Chandler. Could you make a case that Dustin Poirier's got a better resume than Khabib Namagomedov? Now think about this, okay? You might think um, that's a bit crazy because the fact is uh, Khabib actually beat Dustin Poirier and that's true, he did beat him. But just looking at both of their resumes, um, I think you can make an argument that uh, Dustin Poirier has a better resume than uh, Khabib overall, even though um, he's lost to him. I mean, the quality of wins on his resume is um, actually quite ridiculous. Um, his resume is, is right up there with the best of the best. That's why even though he doesn't have a title and he's not won gold yet, he's considered a lightweight ATG. Like, he's not as great as Khabib. Khabib is probably the greatest lightweight ever. But in terms of, he's definitely up there. He's definitely above a Tony Ferguson. You could put him above Benson Henderson as well, and the likes of Eddie Alvarez, in my opinion. He's probably, um, I think you can make a case that he's the greatest lightweight not to win gold. If he was to retire right now, based on his resume right now, what he's accomplished, um, in terms of who he's beat. Um, and on top of that, there are fighters out there that he's been beaten by. You can still add them to his resume because he fought them. For example, Korean Zombie beat him. Cub Swanson beat him. Uh, I think Michael Johnson beat him as well. So th these are fighters that he's fought. He may not have won against them, but he's fought them. Also, Khabib as well is on his resume in a sense that he's actually fought him. He lost to him, but he still fought him. If you take everything into account, you can make a case that um, in terms of resume, in terms of fighters he's actually fought and fighters he's actually beat, um, he might have fought, like, if you look at his overall career, He's uh he might have a better resume than Khabib. Even though Khabib's a better fighter, a legacy wise, you gotta put Khabib above him because of his sheer dominance and the fact that he's never lost. He's only lost a handful of rounds, let alone fights. So because of that, you have to say Khabib is a better fighter and you have to put Khabib above him in terms of legacy. But in terms of resume, you can make a case that Dustin Poirier has a better resume than um Khabib if he beats Khabib. Conor McGregor this weekend and then on top of that if he uh, fights uh, Charles Oliveira for the title beats him and wins the title I mean th that would just be ridiculous if he was to do that um, I mean he's one of them rare champions in the sense that let, let's just say hypothetically he becomes champion I mean he's had to go through the hardest road to become champion I mean just look at his resume a lot of people mention Tony Ferguson and that's true Tony Ferguson had to go through a murderer's road to even get the interim title. But the fact is, Tony Ferguson never w was in a position to actually win the title. And there was a variety of reasons for this. But I think you have to put Dustin Poirier above Tony Ferguson just, um, just based off his resume alone. I know Tony Ferguson went on his 12-fight win streak. But in terms of resume alone, I think... Dustin Poirier is just right up there. I think he 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 is one of the best uh, fighters. I mean, even if you look at the uh, UFC pound for pound list, um, he's on a top ten list, even though he's not won a title. I mean, that's that's quite rare. The people that usually make the top ten list on the UFC pound for pound list on their website, they they have to win a title for them to be on that list. Unless you're Aljamain Sterling. Um, you have to win a title. You need to win UFC gold to be on that list. Obviously, there's been rare exceptions. For example, Tony Ferguson. The aforementioned Tony Ferguson. But apart from him, a few other fighters. Um, I think he's on that list. Uh, obviously, John Jones as well. But John Jones um, has, in a weird, weird way, dropped his title to move up to heavyweight. So he didn't lose the title on the skate on the in in a fight. He lost the title because of politics because he wants to move up to heavyweight. 
The only person on that list is uh, Dustin Poirier, who's never touched gold. He's touched interim gold, but he's never won a title, like the main gold title. And he's on that list because of the strength of his resume. So that says a lot about him. So uh, tell me your thoughts below. Um, I think a lot of Khabib fans are probably going to hate on this video. They're going to be like, what are you talking about? But if you just look at it resume-wise, I think you can make a case that Dustin Poirier has a better resume than Khabib Namagomedov, just based on who he's for um, throughout his entire career. I mean, this dude's been in there with Cub Swanson, Korean Zombie, Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje, Conor McGregor. Obviously, he's going to fight him this weekend, so Conor McGregor twice. Obviously, he fought Max Holloway twice as well. I mean, Eddie Alvarez. Um, who, who else has he fought? Um, he's obviously fought Dan Hooker, Anthony Pettis, um, and then after he beats Conor McGregor, let's just say hypothetically he does, there could be a chance he loses that fight because Conor McGregor's uh, not a joke. Um, if he was to fight Charles Oliveira, win or lose, like if if he wins against him, then I think it's undeniable. I think his resume might be up there with the best. Um, he might even be the second best lightweight of all time if you take into account everything. Like obviously behind Khabib because Khabib's dominance is just um, undeniable. But apart from Khabib, um, you can make a case that he is, he is the best uh, lightweight in the world, like the second best lightweight right now. He, if he beats Charles Oliveira, undeniably he is the best lightweight in the world. Like there's not no denying it. A lot of people think he already is, even though Charles Oliveira has the title and he's he definitely does have a claim to the throne. Because he has beaten Michael Chandler, who's a formidable fighter. If you just talk about resume alone, I think you can make a case that uh, Dustin Poirier is the true unheralded champion. So yeah, that's my thoughts below. Tell me your thoughts below. Tell me what you think. Who do you think is the best lightweight? Um, and do you, do you think I've got a point here that a child, um, Dustin Poirier might be uh, might have a better resume than Khabib Nurmagomedov, even though he lost to him? Um, even though he lost to him. I'm not saying he's as good a fighter as does, um, Khabib Namagabedov, but what I'm saying is just the resume in terms of the fighters that he's fought and the fighters that he's beat. Um, I think I think um, if he, if he if he wins gold, then he is definitely the second best uh, lightweight that's ever lived, in my opinion. So yeah, that's my thoughts below. Who do you think is the best lightweight? Um, do you think I've got a point in saying that resume-wise, Dustin Poirier might be above uh, Khabib, um, or do you think I'm just a uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Tell me your thoughts below. Tell me what you think. Okay, that that's all I've got to say today now. See ya.